Here's an RF amplifier board that I made up three or four years ago as part of a receiver project. So it's a self-contained RF stage with uh, filtering on the input and the output. So it's quite small, about, uh, what is it, 65, 65 by uh, 15 millimetres, two and a half inches. It has header pins on either end, so it was designed to slot into a, a baseboard, which would do the diode switching. The gain device is a J310 JFET. It's sitting in a little double-sided PCB cutout that's just big enough for the body, the plastic body of the FET. What it allows you to do is it allows you to solder the gate lead right onto that copper side. And so you ground the gate lead um, very close to earth. And then the source and the drain are just pulled out either side. So going back to the hallowed pages of EMRFD, here it is, the basic amplifier and mounting details, and in the front end of one of the receiver projects. My particular build of this RF amplifier was a bit of an amalgam of uh, various configurations. So the output is double tuned and the input is also double tuned with link coupling on the input. So I thought it would be interesting just to power this up and see how well it was tuned and what sort of gain I could get out of it. I've got some better test equipment now so it should prove a good unit under test. I'm going to connect a source of broadband RF noise to its input and that'll be generated from this little piece here. This is, this is a very simple broadband RF noise generator. I think it's two 2N3904s. I can see about 60 millivolts RMS of RF coming off this. So that will be the signal source, broadbanded signal source. And then on the output, I'll connect the amplifier up to a spectrum analyzer using an SDR play, uh, the RSP1A. So the power supply for the noise generator can be a transistor battery and the RF stage is on the bench power supply. So it's drawing 17 milliamps at 12 volts. So this is the Spectrum Analyzer software uh, by Andrew Developments 2020. Thanks very much. The first thing I'll do is I'll make sure the noise source is working. So I've connected the noise source straight into the RSP1. So with the noise generator off, it's sitting on minus 130 dB. Turn on the noise generator, and it's up to around about 100 dB. So that's about, we're seeing about 30 dB of noise there. Interesting that it tails off a little bit. And if I opened up the bandwidth of the spectrum analyzer, we'd see it vary, it, it, it gradually drops as the frequency increases. So it, it's, not, um, it's not a great noise source, but um, more than adequate for uh, this experiment. So we'll take the noise source off and connect it back up to the RF amplifier stage. And I'll connect the RF amplifier board into the RSP1A. And now we see the shape of the passband and we can see the magnitude of gain. Right outside the passband, we're, we're at around minus 133, 
132 dB and in the middle of the passband or up at, well, for ease, ease of uh, calculation, minus 110. So about 22 dB difference or around about 22 dB relative gain, which is more than I expected out of this uh, J310 amplifier. The frequency range of the passband so it's got a big peak up at 3.650. So it's great if you're in VK and you want to work sideband. Acceptable up to 3.7, which is the uh, top end of the VK 80 meter band. But if you want to work CW, you're going to be from a hun minus 110 to minus 118. So it's 8 dB from 3650 to 35 so you really don't want to have a big roll off um, like that on an 80 meter filter while we're watching the spectrum display get one of my trusty jeweler's screwdrivers insert it in the trim caps and give them a turn so this particular tune circuit's having a pretty profound effect on the shape of this uh, bandpass filter. So that's moved the peak right up to above 3.9 megahertz and it's distorted the shape. So I'll put that back at about the optimum place, which is around where we had it. Moving to the next trim cap and this one's bringing in a bit of noise, which is disturbing the display, but this one's having less of an effect. Onto another trim cap, this time I'm in the input and tuning it through its range. And again, you can see a, a shallow peak there. With the tune circuits the way they're set up now, that's about the best I'm going to get this uh, amplifier. And it's not very good, is it? Because, um, because there's 8 to 9 dB between uh, 3.5 and 3650. We want to move the resonant frequency of these parallel tuned circuits down a little bit. And before I start adding capacitors, there's just something that I'd like to try. I wonder if, just by compressing the windings, because there is a little bit of space on these toroids. When I wound them, I evenly spaced the windings right around the toroids. And I know from experience that you can get maybe 5% increase in a toroid's inductance just by, just by compressing the, uh, the turns up. Not so much on 80 metres with these T37-2s, but with the T37-6s, the yellow toroids, uh, they are um, much more sensitive to, um, if you like, the, um, the spacing of the windings or the density of the windings. So you can expand them and contract them and get um, useful amounts of uh, trim of the uh, inductance. Just got to hope that I'm not nicking the copper enamel off. I don't think I am. And uh, also have to hope that I haven't torn any of the ends off of the PCB. That one's feeling loose, but no, that looks okay. So let's, let's turn it on again and see if that's made any useful difference. So touching up those trim caps again, and uh, yes, we're not going to get it. We're not going to get it much improved. A healthier looking shape, but it's still too narrow. Um, it has moved down from three six fifty to uh, about three six twenty. So we're going to have to add some capacitance to some of these tuned circuits. So although the board was originally made with leaded components, there's no reason why I can't just drop a surface mount 33 picofarad capacitor 
across one or two or even all of the existing trimmer caps in the bandpass tune circuits. Just a little tack joint there to keep it in place and then I'll put the board down and solder it properly. So now with that extra 33 picofarad of capacitance in two of the four tuned circuits, here we go. So this is looking much better. So what that's done is it's moved the peak of the pass band right down to 3.5 megahertz, which is good because I think three of the four of the trimmer caps are fully meshed. Now what I can do is to recenter on 3.5 rather than where it was and uh, that will just make the display look more symmetrical. So we've now got our peak at 3.5 so we should be able to move this pass band right just by playing with those trim caps and there's the full extent of it. So I went ahead and added 33 picofarad surface mount capacitors to the two remaining tune circuits and uh, and with adjustment uh, I've got it to uh, to this shape so that's uh, minus 107 dB at its uh, peak there and um, at 3532 which is my favorite CW frequency so that's within half a dB of the peak uh, at the bottom end of the band it's uh, dB or so down and uh, uh, stays within about 1.5 dB, dB up to 3625 or so. At the very top of the VK band it's um, 113, 107, so it's 6 dB down. Now for a general coverage receiver that's not really acceptable and so the way you'd address that is that you could decrease the capacitive coupling between the two sections of the bandpass filters. I think at the moment it's 20 picofarads, which is quite high, so that makes for quite a sharp filter. So uh, I'm happy with that, and uh, I can um, retire this um, test jig now and uh, put this little RF module uh, back into a project at some point in the future. Here's one more scan opened up to 10 megahertz. So it's centered on five megahertz and uh, spanning from, from DC to 10 megahertz. So there's the uh, RF amplifiers uh, pass band there and um, gain shape. And um, that's around about 20 dB or so. So that's all good. Uh, but I just haven't been able to explain what these spikes are here now and look at the size of them i mean they are minus 82 db so they're 10 20 db larger than the uh, center of the pass band of the uh, amplifier my first thought was that they might be am broadcast bands breaking in but the frequencies don't correspond so these are not the frequencies of big AM stations, but also they go well above, they go uh, up to 1.5 megahertz. And there's one or two kind of anomalistic spikes up here at 4.38 megahertz. And there's one in the middle of the 80 meter band, 3.608, 3.610 or thereabouts. So this had me scratching my head for some time until I took a sort of a sideways glance at the bench power supply that I'm using. So I'm going to take the RF module off the bench power supply and run it on a battery. So there's the same frequency domain scan with the RF power amplifier running on a small LiPo pack. And uh, that's cleaned up all of those spikes down the bottom end. So I can only assume that they are coming out of the switch mode bench power supply. Now they did look pretty horrendous on this display, but remember that I'm looking 
from minus 50 to minus 130 dB. So they're minus 80 dB down, uh, probably uh, not offensive in most circumstances. There's still a spike here. I have no idea what this is. It's either being picked up locally or it's an artifact of the SDR play. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe and check out my other projects at vk3hn.wordpress.com.